Cruise control is a prototypical example of a control system and one that we will use here to motivate why we consider feedback and what advantages feedback provides. This block diagram indicates the um, traditional parts of a control system, uh, in particular a tracking, uh, a control system with a tracking objective, the desired speed that you set in your car is the reference, there's some sort of controller, which is what we get to decide, um, that sets what the throttle does uh, in order to uh, make the engine uh, move the car forward and, and achieve an actual speed that is close to or exactly equal to the desired speed. What gets in the way is, the, is that the road is not always constant. It could have a different road grade in this case is what we're going to consider. So that's the slope of the road. And what provides us the ability to use feedback is the speedometer. So the speedometer reads the actual speed and um, produces a measured speed, which is usually pretty close, but could have some sort of other disturbance, such as sensor noise, injected in there. And so this is the traditional block diagram that we'll, we'll consider. So in order to start thinking about these ideas, we really need to have some sort of um, model that represents what the system is going to do so we can anticipate and so we can actually design a controller in order to accomplish our, our goals here. Um, in this particular example, we're going to use a steady state approach, which means that we're not going to have a differential equation. Pretty much every other example that we'll consider will have a differential equation, but we will stick to a steady state uh, uh, kind of static approach in order to motivate the ideas here and not get complicated down um, by the ODE uh, modeling. So in order to build such a model, we need to have some sort of observation or knowledge about the system. In this case, we observe that on a level road around 65 miles per hour, so we're kind of restricting ourselves around that, that 65 miles per hour, um, if the throttle is increased by one degree, that leads to an increase in speed by 10 miles per hour of the car. Vice versa, if uh, the throttle is reduced by an angle of one degree, the speed is also reduced by 10 miles an hour. In addition, we observe that if the car is going up a road grade of 1%, that leads to the speed decreasing by 5%. And then if it's going down, by 1%, then that means that it's actually going to move faster at the, uh, by 5 miles per hour. And so there's additive. So if it was 2%, then we would get 10 miles per hour, uh, and so on. So in order to, to use that, we build this into a quantitative model. And so here I'm just trying to show that there's a couple different ways that you could express this. Um, on the left, we have a diagram that, that shows pretty much what those, those uh, this two statements say. Essentially, the input u, the throttle, uh, is multiplied by 10. So the degree of the throttle is multiplied by 10 in order to 10 miles per hour in order to determine what the resulting speed y is. At the same time, the disturbance w is multiplied by 5 miles per hour and added on with a negative sign there uh, to, um, to figure out what its contribution is to the speed. We can actually simplify this, and uh, if we wanted to, we can send u uh, directly in and add in half of w, and then multiply both of those by 10 to get the resulting speed. So this just shows you that we can do some, maybe some finagling around with exactly what the block diagram looks like. So again, we can express y as, an, as a combination of u and w. u is throttle, w is the disturbance. So what we're going to be doing here is just to take a look at what happens if we use feedback and if we don't use feedback. And one of the important things about this example is that as you're driving, you're not going to exactly know what the road grade is ahead of you. And that's really what cruise control is, is supposed to do. It's supposed to compensate for changes in road elevation, um, maybe even uh, winds and other things. Uh, so, uh, and we're gonna evaluate that in terms of some sort of performance, that performance is going to be how close we are to our desired speed. So if we consider an open loop approach, open loop means that the controller doesn't use any knowledge about the system other than um, the original model. So we don't get real-time feedback 
in order to uh, change what the controller is going to do. So in this case, if we use our knowledge about the system, we just know that if we change the input throttle angle by a degree, we get 10 miles an hour uh, in, the, in the output speed. And so we essentially what we do is we invert that in order to express that if I want a desired speed of R, then I just divide that by 10 and that tells me what the throttle angle should be. And so the controller then is just simply one over 10. Uh, and that's as indicated now in our block diagram here. So if we insert this definition of U into our expression for the resulting speed, so Y is now, uh, if we substitute it into the expression 10 times U minus uh, one half W, then we get this expression that has R and W inside, and we find that the resulting speed is equal to R, our reference or desired speed, minus 5W. And so again, we're really interested in understanding how different our actual speed Y is compared to our reference speed R. And so we define an error that's just R minus Y. And using our, what we just defined, we can see that that is equal to 5W. What this tells us is that if there is no disturbance, so if there is no road level, if we're driving on a flat road and there's nothing for the cruise, cruise control to do, open loop works just fine. In fact, we get perfect performance in the sense that Y, our output, is 65 miles an hour, exactly what we want it to, to be. However, as we start adding road grade, we see a deviation that error increases. And so at 1% road grade, uh, we multiply five times one, one because it's a 1% road grade, and that gives us an error of five. So five W turns into five. And then at two degrees or 2% uh, grade, that uh, the output is now uh, different by 10 miles an hour. And so what we're really seeing is, is that the open loop approach does not do anything to mitigate the sensitivity of the output to the disturbance W. So it doesn't really do anything. It just leaves it there and we just hope that there, the disturbances aren't very large. So now let's see what feedback is able to accomplish. So in feedback, one of the most rudimentary ways that one could implement a feedback approach is to quantify that error, determine how far we are away from the reference or the desired speed, and just multiply by some proportionality constant k. So oftentimes we call that proportionality constant a gain. And so that gain is something that we get to pick and it, it quantifies how quickly we, we respond to error. So if we make that really large, that's the same problem as oversteering, uh, if we're considering a steering problem. Here we're considering uh, speed, and so we don't want it so large that it, um, it uh, drastically increases the speed, but at the same time we don't want it to take forever because we want it to be able to respond to changes in uh, road grade. So now if we stick this definition of u, k times r minus y, into our expression for y, then we substitute that in and we get an expression that has elements of k, r, y, and w. And so we have y is equal to 10 kr minus 10 ky minus 5w. And so we have y on both sides. And so what we're going to do is we're going to aggregate all of our y's together on the left hand side and solve for y. And now we get an expression this ratio here, 10k over 1 plus 10k, that multiplies our reference, r. So ideally we want y to be equal to the reference. We want our output to be output speed to be what we want it to be, our reference. Um, and so if 10k over 1 plus 10k is 1, then we've done that. Uh, and ideally we want the contribution to the disturbance w to be very small. We want it to be zero. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> If we increase k, then what happens is that 1 in the denominator becomes relatively small, and, uh, and that means that as k gets very large, that that first ratio of 10k over 1 plus 10k, that goes to 1. So it achieves what we wanted to do. And 5 over, 5 over 1 plus 10k also goes to 0, which also achieves what we want to do. So one of the key 
take, takeaways here is that by using feedback, we've actually been able to choose K in order to make our output Y more or less sensitive to the disturbance W. And so we get to pick how sensitive using that, that uh, gain K. So if we look again at the error, E is equal to R minus Y, we can calculate what it looks like. And so that just creates this expression in green. And so if we pick uh, just a random, slightly large value of the gain K at equals to 10, then at zero road grade, W is equal to zero, we are at 64 miles an hour and uh, 30.36. So that's a very small error away from uh, our desired speed. And so that's pretty decent performance. It's not exact, but the benefit that we get now is that as we increase the road grade, when W is equal to one, now we compute that error and that error is still only at 1%. And so we have a very, ins uh, a controller that's very insensitive to the road disturbance W.